What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today I'm going to be giving you a guide on how to make lo-fi hip-hop on the Novation circuit. This is a viewer requested video and this seemed like a good idea. This is a genre I've made a few times and seems to be a fairly popular one for self-contained groove boxes so figured I'd give it a go. So I'm going to show you how I made two different beats with two kind of different vibes and some different techniques and go through all the tips and tricks that I use to make that work. So let's start off with the beat that you heard in the intro and let's start off with the drums. So the foundation of that is just this. And that's from my own free drums pack for the circuit. I'll leave a link to that in the description. There's no download gates or anything dumb like that. And um, there are a few things that I did to these specific samples to make them more in keeping with the lo-fi hip hop aesthetic. First of all, this kick, fun fact, was part of a song challenge video I did a while ago where I made a song out of a car and that's me like hitting the window and ended up being a really nice little kick. But what I'm doing here to really bring out the lo-fi aesthetic is I'm pitching it down a bit. And I've got a very slight amount of distortion on it and then I've got it decently short. Normally it rings out quite a bit. That's what it sounds like pitch down and ringing out, which is not pleasant. So a decently short, thumpy little kick. Same deal for this clap. This clap did not originally sound as lo-fi as it does. So a couple things I've got going. First of all, I've got the reverb enabled here and just a little bit of that on the clap so it rings out. And once again, this clap is pitched down from somewhere around here and it's shortened a bit, so that's it, pitched down and long. And so now it's functioning almost like a cross stick on a real drum kit. And similar deal on the hi-hat, once again, it's pitched down and shortened a good bit with a subtle amount of reverb on it. So, and we've also got that little percussion element, which I love. So there are kind of three main ways that I use to get the lo-fi hip hop beat that kind of drunken drummer, slightly swung off kilter beat. The first, of course, is just to play it in manually. You can hit shift and the record button to turn off quantization, which is lovely. And just play it in yourself. I've got a drums background, so I have a fairly decent amount of rhythmic control. So I can do that kind of flam thing with the hi-hat and the snare, and I can kind of feel out just how much I want to bring the snare forward in time and bring the hi-hat back in time. So you get this kind of rub between the two elements. But not everyone's gonna be able to do that, and sometimes it's not exactly the vibe that you want. Sometimes you wanna have more control over it than that. So that leads us to the second way that I'm getting the beat, and that's what I used for this one, so. For this one, I went in manually and basically did what I just described, but by programming it. So the kick is just straight ahead. No real alterations in the way that it's laid out. The clap is programmed to hit a couple little micro steps early. So ordinarily it would hit here and here. Instead I have it hitting here and here and then shifted forward a bit. So the effect that it has is it hits a little bit earlier than right on the grid. And then I have basically the opposite thing done for every other hi-hat. So these are right on the grid. These right here are shifted forward ever so slightly. So you get a little bit of a shuffle going on. And then I can kind of place uh, the other elements wherever I want. In this case, I have this delayed a bit further, once again, to increase that kind of sloppy off kilter, but still musically pleasing feel. And that does it for the drums. Moving on to the chords. This is a patch that rings out a whole lot. This is from Tom Cosm's pack. Available on Isotonic. Not a sponsor, but a friend of the channel. And um, basically I'm playing a bit of a jazzier chord. And I'm letting that ring out. Same deal there. And just letting that 
bring out this nice mellow synth. And then under that, under that super mellow synth, gritty bass. Or at least grittier. So this bass has got a good bit of body to it, a little bit of grit to it. And this is being played in unquantized, so I can have this kind of halfway between triplets and straight ahead thing going on with these little octave up notes. And this is a technique I use a lot with these kind of bass lines. So I'll have this bass line moving all around here and then for extra rhythmic interest and to make it kind of pop out a bit more, I'll do these little, little octave jumps. I think that's a lot of fun. So now to arrange this whole beat um, I'm not going to do a super drawn out version, but I will mention I've got a second pattern here. Do a little melody thing. Since this patch is polyphonic and it has a nice long sustain, I can have these nice long sustained chords with nice long sustained notes on top of them, which is great. So the plan here for the arrangement is to start off no bass, no chords, and no percussion. So just start off with filtered down drums. Bring this in. So now we've established our drums, we can add something in. We brought in our chords, so we'll let that ride for a bit. Time for something to change, let's bring in the bass. From here, depending on how much time you've spent layering elements, you can bring another piece of percussion or have something else change. Or in this case, we can basically mute the bass and then change these patterns and filter everything down. So now we're introducing the melody, but everything is super filtered down and there's very little low end. So now we've introduced the melody, it's time to bring back the bass and do a little, little fill there. And if we wanted to at the end. Do a fade out, fairly common for lo-fi hip hop. So that does it for the first beat. Let's move on to the second one, which has got a bit of a different tone and some different techniques. The major kind of different thing going on with this beat is the way that I've programmed the drums and everything else kind of shoots off from there. So not only is the tone of the drums themselves different, but the beat programming is different. So first of all, nice low kick, similar technique for kick processing that I showed in the previous beat. Harder snare, and that's got that nice vinyl crackle at the end. Short hat open hat. The big difference in the way that this beat is programmed is that here it's perfectly locked onto the grid, but it's a grid that I've changed. So one way that people will emulate the drunken drummer effect and one thing that Jay Dilla would sometimes do is play in a quantized way or quantized stuff to quintuplets. So dividing a beat into five, kind of like a triplet divides a beat into three, a quintuplet divides a beat into five. And so if you play in quintuplets where you go kick, two, three, four, five, snare, two, three, four, five, and then put a hi-hat on the fours, you get a very swung, somewhere in between straight ahead and triplets feel. So let me mute the synths. So the way I've set this up is that I've gone to length for the patterns, and I've shortened every single pattern in this jam, both on the synths and on the drums, to 10 steps. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then it immediately repeats. And I've got a kick on the one, obviously. So it goes one, two, three, four, five. That's the end of the first half of the beat. And then it goes back to one. So one, two, three, four, five, one. That's where my snare is. One, two, three, four, five, one. So the kick and snare are on the ones. One, two, three, four, five, snare, two, three, four, five, kick. And that loops. So by itself, it sounds straight ahead and normal. 
until you add that other kick in because that kick is quantized to quintuplets, so it's not perfectly on the one, two, three, four that you'd expect it to be. So it starts bringing in that little off kilter feel, which is accentuated by the hi-hats. So for the hi-hats, it goes one, there's a hi-hat there, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Putting the hi-hats on either the threes or the fours, I typically find is the best way to get this feel. So if I was to just demonstrate that real quick. That's the hi-hats on the threes, which is a completely different vibe, which I do like the feel of quite a bit, but that's not quite the lo-fi hip hop vibe and definitely not the vibe I was going for for this beat. And so to accentuate that four, I've got an open hi-hat placed right here. So that does it for the drums. And that kind of ripples through the way everything is programmed. So if you go to the synth track, once again, it's set so it only takes up 10 steps. And this is just playing these nice long sustained chords. This is a synth patch from Bo Beats, Coffee and Beats Volume 2, which is also lovely. In this place, I got playing some real simple chords because the main focus is the bass line. In this case, once again, the bass line is completely unhinged from the grid, you know, shift record and record it in unquantized. So it can kind of slide around in between quintuplets, triplets, and whatever else. So it just kind of sits over top of everything. If I was to quantize that to quintuplets, you'd get a bit of a different feel. And for this, I want it to feel loose and a little more unhinged. And then you've got these nice floaty chords on top. So I like the pairing of the gritty bass with the floaty chords. And in this case, the bass line just repeats and the chords change on top of it, kind of reharmonizing the melody that the bass line is playing. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to hear more lo-fi hip hop that I've made using the Novation circuit, you can click tap up over here. And if you'd like to watch another beat making tutorial on the Novation circuit by me, you can click tap down over here. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with a new video next week. Peace.